Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 34-year-old male with complaints of right-sided upper extremity neurologic complaints. They had been thrown from a horse a month or so ago and fractured their clavicle, had subsequent internal orthopedic fixation. We can see over here on the right, this is a black band. This is the hardware going across the clavicle. It's been fixed. This is the cervical spine up here thoracic spine, and they wanted to do an MRI of the brachial plexus to evaluate their neurologic complaints. So the, the brachial plexus is you know, deep to the clavicle here, so we're going to look at this. Now most radiologists like myself don't see a lot of these, so I'm not the best person to give this lecture, but I figured I'd just show you what um, I've seen here. And um, most of the time these are normal, but this has a finding. So here we go. So to run over the anatomy of the brachial plexus, the anatomy is daunting because the nerves come off the cervical spine and upper thoracic spine, they come apart, come back together, come back apart. So really super complex anatomy. And luckily in MRI you can't see all that stuff, you just kind of see the general region where they come off, they kind of blend together, and they come down here through this space filled with fat, down here into the arm. Here's the axillary portion, here's the brachial plexus as it goes underneath the clavicle, and then it comes up here between a couple muscles, and then plugs back into the uh, uh, plugs into the spinal uh, canal here. So to go over the anatomy, there are a few things. There's roots, trunks, divisions, and cords. You may remember from medical school if you're a doctor here. But right off where they come off here, we have five, what we call them roots. One, two, three, four, five. And they start uh, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So five different roots. And they come off here, and this, the root region is about where the muscles are. So I think about things that are right by the foramina and going off towards the muscles or in between the muscles are the roots. And you can look here for traumatic nerve root sleeve avulsion. If you see fluid out here, here are the region of the roots. And then they, uh, again, there's five roots, and they blend together pretty quickly. And I can't see this very well, but... Somewhere near, they blend together quickly, and then right lateral to the muscles, around the lateral margin of the muscles, they become the trunks. And there's three trunks, so the five turn into three, somewhere over here. And again, it's really hard to see because there's muscles around it, and it's an oblique angle. Um, but you usually can see it once it gets down here. So this is well seen. This region is very hard to see. And this is a region of, again, the trunks, where it goes from five to three in the trunks. Then it goes down a little bit further in this region. This is the region where the clavicle is. So think about deep to the clavicle in this general region. The brachial plexus goes from the three trunks into six divisions. There's three anterior and three posterior divisions. And again, luckily you can't see them all. You just see this looks like a single band here. And these are the region of the divisions. And then as you get out from underneath the clavicle, we get into the axillary portion down here, I guess. Um, in this region, we call these the cords. And again, it goes from the six divisions down to three cords. And then around where the humeral head is here, the glenohumeral joint from here down, um, this is the end of the um, uh, brachial plexus area, and we get into the just the nerves that go down to the arm. So uh, again, the anatomy is very daunting. It's hard to tell things apart. But so to keep it simple, just think about the trunks, I'm sorry, the roots coming off the uh, spine here and the trunks. Remember, it's from C5 through T1, so five roots, which is not terribly hard. And then the trunks over here somewhere where there's three. And then think about deep to the clavicle, there's the divisions, and there's six. Again, I don't think that's that important that there's six, but around the clavicle, think about the divisions. And then out more distantly in the axilla, there are the cords, and that is uh, hopefully more than enough anatomy. So in this patient, things are pretty good here on this T1 image. Normally these are done with and without contrast. We just did this without contrast, or that's the way it's ordered. And this looks totally normal. We usually look through here, especially on sagittal images. You can see fat surrounding the artery, vein, and nerves. And look for any infiltration, like with adenopathy, some cancers can cause infiltration throughout the brachial plexus or lymph nodes. And um, sometimes you can see neuritis. Yeah, but in this case, things look pretty good on this coronal T1 image. Now we're going to put up a a coronal stir sequence here. We can see here the roots, all looking perfectly fine. 
things look pretty good over here in the region of the trunks, but when we get over here to the divisions, we see that there is an abnormality. Here's the left side. You can see this little area right here, small and kind of intermediate signal. We see this enlarged and bright. So this is where they've had prior trauma right beneath the clavicle. So I believe they've injured the brachial plexus right here and it's enlarged and there's increased abnormal signal within it. If we follow this out further, we can see this portion right over here in the region of the divisions. And uh, I'm sorry, passive divisions in the region of the cords. We see this enlarged bright thing here. So it looks like this is neuritis as well. Here for the left side, we see this normal appearance, much smaller and uh, more intermediate. And this is larger and brighter. So we have a couple findings here. The brachial plexus is abnormal, probably a traumatic injury right here associated with this cavicular fracture. And they also have this edema uh, neuritis more distally. And that's it. Thank you very much.